What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. It's messed up what you did to the pilgrims, but I hope everyone enjoys this. Enjoy some Black Friday sales tomorrow. Eats up, spends time with their friends and family, and most of all, be safe out there. Um, I had to make this video. I read an article. Amir Khan, Amir Khan, Amir Khan. Where do I begin? Um, Amir Khan, I take nothing away from him in, in the guts, balls department. No homo. Um, I feel he's a fighter who is exciting to watch. He seems like a nice enough dude. Um, and again, like I said, he puts on exciting fights and fights that are enjoyable to the eye. However, I don't think he's always the most cautious or the smartest fighter in there. Sometimes he bites off more than he can chew. Sometimes he's hurt and he will do things that will further get him hurt. And the crazy thing about it is with this said and done, I feel like one of the best strengths a person can have, like not just a boxer, just a person in general, is the ability to use self-reflection and know your own strengths and weaknesses. Because if you know your own strengths, you can play off them and you can make sure the world sees those strengths and those are brought to the forefront. But you also have to know your weaknesses. That's the flip side to that coin. You have to know your weaknesses so you can improve on them. You can mask them. Um, Amir Khan, I don't know that he knows his weaknesses, his chin. Um, so again, props to the guy for cojones. But at the same time, you got to know what you're getting into. You got to build yourself back up sometimes when you get knocked down, that kind of thing. But anyway, Amir Khan just seems delusional. When I watch these videos and interviews, sometimes he says some things and I don't know what kind of fantasy world he's living in with some of the comments that he makes. Um, it's called delusions of grandeur. And that's the the thought process in which you think you're more impactful than what you really are. And I kind of feel that way for Amir Khan. Like, I think he thinks he's... He had a good run, like where he was undefeated after the Bradis Prescott. He really got his act together, started training with Freddie Roach, had strong, strong along some impressive wins for his resume, um, beating, I would say, past prime fighter like a Barrera. But he also fought like a Pauli Malignaggi when Pauli Malignaggi was, um, was fresher. Um, Zab Judah is a great name on his resume. So he has some significant wins, but... As of right now, I'm seeing current interviews, and he's still talking like he just beat Zab Judah. But since that time, a lot has changed. Um, this is what Mayweather, or excuse me, this is what Amir Khan said regarding a Mayweather fight. I will not be dictated to. With me, it will be at 147 pounds, and that's it. I will be moving up in weight, and I will not be killing myself to make it. Has Mayweather fought anyone who has done that before? He is always fighting guys who are slow. But I think it is time that he moves up a notch and takes someone quick, exciting, and as big as him. Let me keep going. I want to comment on that, but I'll come back to it. And then the the interviewer, I guess, asked if he is intimidated by Mayweather's unbeaten record. And Amir Khan said, no, it is not intimidating. The only person I fear is God. I do not fear anyone in life. I'm not scared of Mayweather's career or what he's done. I respect it, but I am not afraid. He always fights people he can control. He cannot control me. I am one of the most exciting and fastest fighters in the world. So let's see how he copes against speed and power instead of just power. Um, These are big words coming from Amir Khan. Like, there, There's like a small percentage of things that he said that I actually agree with. Um, he does have the speed. I'm not so sure that he has power, quote unquote power. I mean, he has decent power, but against bigger guys, I don't really know because at 140, if you look at his record, he literally has like one KO and someone, I'd said this before and someone's like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He not A KO is different from a TKO. Sometimes people round them all up in one category, but I'm talking about certified knockouts where you knock a person out and they don't get up past the 10 count. That's what I'm talking about. He has a knockout against Zab Judah, and I think that's it. I don't know if the Carlos Molina was a TKO stoppage. I'm pretty sure it was. So um, if you look at Amir Khan's record in terms of actual KO knockouts, like Lucas Matisse knocked out Mike Dallas Jr., something in that regard, 
or someone who just really couldn't get up um, past the the 10 count. He doesn't have that many. A lot of his fights end in stoppage is TKOs, which is still good, but it's not the same as a KO. So that kind of shows you where his power is at, and that's at 140. So you're overwhelming guys with your speed and, and maybe busting their face up leather, 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 and they don't have a chance. Like the Pali Malinaji, it got to the point where it was starting to be a whitewash. So it was stopped. He wasn't doing enough. He didn't have the power to back you up off him, and you won that fight. But that's different than the KO, just for the record. Um, then he says, I think it's time he moves up a notch. Moves up a notch. Like, facing you is just the end-all, be-all. Like, you didn't even look good in your last fight, and you had everything in your favor. You fought in England. You fought against a guy who's older, who who just got severely outboxed by a contender, Sean Porter. I'm not saying Sean Porter's bad, but he's not, he's not proven himself to be at an elite level and Julio Diaz had a draw with him in the first fight and then Sean Porter went to blast him and clearly and convincingly win the rematch um but before that Amir Khan had a fight with him and got knocked down and hurt by him you were at home you were fighting a, a shop worn fighter at a catch weight you know what I'm saying like this is it's it's crazy to me that and you you're saying that it's about time he moves up a notch, so you're you're the notch above, you're the cut above the rest. And then he says, um, someone quick, exciting, and as big as him. Like, what was Canelo? Canelo's bigger than you. Um, if you look at Mayweather and Canelo side by side, they're right around the same height. Canelo might be a hair taller than him, but in terms of actual body mass, Canelo was big. I mean, look at his fucking neck. He has that pit bull neck. Um, big ass arms, um, big quads, like the dude's big. So I, I really don't understand what Amir Khan is talking about saying it's about time he fights someone, moves up a notch and fights someone quick, exciting, and as big as him. Um, I just think he's, Amir Khan's in over his head. Don't think he deserves the Mayweather fight after recent performances. Had this happened after the Lamont Peterson fight, had he said all this, it would have been okay because Lamont Peterson was a rough and tumble affair and a lot of people thought Amir Khan should have won and Lamont Peterson got a hometown decision in some people's eyes so it would have had a little bit more pull but after that you got knocked out by Danny Garcia who was really a last minute replacement to Lamont Peterson in the rematch because Lamont Peterson tested positive for testosterone high levels of testosterone so they threw Danny Garcia who was virtually unknown to the casuals and he blasted you out of the water after you were looking good in the early rounds. In the third round, he had you hurt and you never really recovered. Got you out of there in round four. And then went on to do bigger and better things. Um, then you fought Carlos Molina, a fighter with no power. Moved up a weight. And you blasted him. Your first fight with Virgil Hunter. So I'm like, cool. That's a good confidence builder. Then they fought Julio Diaz because they couldn't make a fight with Josecito or Sinchenko at a catch weight. Neither fighter wanted to go down to the weight limit that Amir Khan and and Team Khan wanted. So those fights were scrapped. You fought Julio Diaz in your own backyard in England, and he gave you all you can handle. Now you're saying it's about time Mayweather moves up a notch? Like, come on, man. Um, you could call me a flow-mo, say whatever. I just keep it real. Um, if Amir Khan had more um, leverage right now in his career, then I would give him all the credit in the world. But some of the statements he's making, I really can't. I can't fathom. And then on top of that, you have a shaky chin. You have a glass chin. So I really don't understand what he's talking about in this article. But to each his own, I think, um, like I said, this fight should have happened years ago. It would have been more exciting. But we've already seen a vulnerable Amir Khan from really lesser fighters than Mayweather. And if you don't think Julio Diaz is a lesser fighter than Mayweather... Please leave a comment and let me know why you feel that way. But Amir Khan, he just seems kind of delusional, like he's off in his own world. And he he's like in denial of what he needs to work on or some shit. Because at the Danny Garcia fight, he was talking big shit about knocking Danny Garcia out. And again, Danny Garcia was a last minute replacement to Lamont Peterson because that rematch was supposed to happen. But obviously due to the Peds situation with testosterone, that fight was scrapped. And they threw Danny Garcia in there. Amir Khan was bigger frame-wise than Danny Garcia. He was faster. 
get more championship level big fight HBO headlining experience and you let Danny Garcia steal your thunder and take that away from you in a fight where you were looking sharp early on. Um, but a lot of people have this notion that, oh, Manny Pacquiao was looking great against Marquez in the fourth fight, but he got knocked out. Amir Khan was killing Danny Garcia the first two rounds, then he got TKO'd. Um, who gives a fuck? Like, honestly, is it really? does it really matter what you look like early if the end result is a you getting TKO'd or KO'd? That's like me taking a 50-question test and I get the first answers, I get the first five answers right, and then I go on to lose the remaining 45. I still get a fucking F. That's like me, yeah, I got the first five answers right, though. But you lost and you missed the, the last 45. So at the end of the, the end of the day, it's still an F. Like, people, people have this notion. Like, I mean, I give them credit. Like, oh, Manny Pacquiao did look good. That was the best I've seen him in recent years other than uh, Brandon Rios. But... Brandon Rios is, is for a different reason. Marquez, that's a challenge. That's a puzzle. And he's fought three times and he looked really good against a fighter where he he didn't necessarily look as sharp in all of the rounds early like, like he did in the fourth fight. But like I said, at the end of the day, the end result is still the same. You still lost and you still got KO'd or TKO'd. So I don't see why people get so hyped over that. And then, like I said, I just think Amir Khan, he's, he's just more like cocky and you have more to prove. You haven't even avenged half of your losses. Uh, Lamont Peterson, I mean, got to give him a pass for that because Lamont Peterson rematch was to take place. But the Bradis Prescott, the Danny Garcia fight, um, I don't know. And during the Danny Garcia press conference, he was talking big shit about what he was going to do. He was like, after knock out your son, will it still be overrated? He says, I haven't beaten anyone. Who's he beaten, man? You get me? He just likes to talk. It just shows you the class. It shows you the class of people. It just shows you the class of people, really. And he was he was just constantly talking shit. So I don't know where Amir Khan's head's at, but let me know what you guys think. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.